Hi folks, this is Jobin here with a little knife review. I just got this uh, last week. It's a balisong or a butterfly knife as it's known in many places. Now, I feel like I can hardly mention a knife like this without pointing out that in many parts of the world and indeed many parts of the United States, uh, this knife is illegal to own and or carry. Now, I really have absolutely no idea why. I mean, there are historical and political reasons, but they don't really make any sense, even relative to most knife laws. Um, I mean, maybe if you're in a country like uh, England that has very restrictive knife laws in general, but in the United States, when you can go into Walmart and buy a pocket knife like this, you know, this Gerber here, one hand opener, locking mechanism. You know, is there anything that makes a ballast song inherently more dangerous, whatever that means? No, there isn't. But anyway, that aside, oh, uh, well, this, this knife, these were actually Ill illegal to carry in my home state until a few years ago. But. Apparently somebody smart actually removed that law because it didn't make any sense. Now, many of you, like me then, probably have never handled one of these or seen it up close. So more than being about just this knife, um, a, a review of the, the quality of this knife, this is also kind of just a, a view of how a balisong works. First off, down here, there's this latch, and that keeps the knife from opening in your pocket. And you can flick that off, and the interesting thing about this latch here is that to put it on, you kind of have to squeeze the handles together a little bit. And that's actually the handles flexing very slightly to allow that to happen. It's not like a complicated hinge or anything. There's some springiness built into these. So when you open it like that, you can spin and reveal the blade. Now, I'm gonna get a kind of close view here. It's got pivots like this. This one has two pins. See in those little circles there. And when a handle hits the pin going that way, it can't go any farther. And when it hits the pin going that way, it can't go any farther. So as you're swinging one of these open, you know, gravity is pulling down on the handle on the left. And so that means that the blade swings forward like that. So there are some people who know really fancy tricks for these. I don't, but there, there are a variety of ways you can open them. Uh, let's see. It's kind of flashy. Let's see if I can do that again. Or you can do it slower with kind of a little sort of hold on to one end there, drop, and then rotate your wrist through. And these knives have kind of an interesting history. I'm not an expert on it, but as I understand it, this knife design came along hundreds of years before folding knives in much of the world were sporting any kind of mechanism to keep them from closing on your fingers. You know, you had folding knives, but you know, this one's a frame lock. So when you push down on it, it's not going to snap shut on you. Um, with a balisong, the, w the way the pin setup worked, as I showed you, if you're holding the knife by the handle, it can't close on you. Barring catastrophic mechanical failure, it's going to stay open. Which, and it's such a simple, clever design, it, it's, it's really a work of art. And if you want some extra security, again, speaking of sort of just clever designs, this locks it open, uh, shut, and open. So there you go. And if you want to release it, just squeeze and it takes the pressure off. So, very cool. 
Now, these have a bit of a reputation as a fighting knife. I don't know if that's deserved, you know, that's sort of getting back into the politics of it again. Not really my thing. But I, I was, I bought one of these as a toy, basically, when I learned that they were actually legal for me to have. But I was really surprised when I started handling it how nice and utilitarian a blade shape this is. I, mean, I, I have sort of an interesting comparison that I don't think I've ever seen somebody make before. Let's look at this next to... I really need a tripod. <laughs> yes, my Mora number one. This is my carving knife for uh, whittling and stuff. Yeah, a lot of people use these for bushcraft, bushcraft, and you know other outdoor pursuits, camping and whatnot. And and look at the blades; they are almost identical. I mean, aside from the fact that the Mora is a Scandi grind, and this one has the uh, butterfly knife has an edge bevel. Surprisingly similar. So almost identical profile, almost identical length, almost identical thickness. So, you know, a Bellison can really make a very practical knife for EDC and other tasks. So, that's something really neat. I think I will actually be carrying this knife sometimes for use, besides just the fun of flipping it around. Now, about this knife in particular, um, I got this from an on, one of those online knife stores that has like free shipping. This cost me 19 bucks shipped. Um, it was advertised as having a stainless steel blade, but they said it's... Hold on, let me read this. It says 1065 forged steel. Well, if it's really 1065 steel, that's high carbon, which in the same family as, you know, 1095, that you'll see a lot of knives from K-Bar and ESEE and Becker and stuff in. So that's actually cool in my book if it really is 1065. And kind of mysteriously it says, Cobra USA limited edition handcrafted in China. Cobra USA knives from China. Okay. Now this one, a lot of a lot of the cheap ones only have one pin in the pivot here. Uh, this one's got two, which I understand is better. It um, keeps the parts of the knife from smacking into each other <laughs> a bit more. Um, this one actually has G10 handle scales, which is one of the things that attracted me to it. I love G10 handles, and they're textured okay. Uh, you can kind of tell this is a che cheap knife because the uh, the screws and it is all screwed together with uh, hex head screws which is great because when it starts to loosen up you can tighten it the screws are a little on the chintzy side um, they aren't quite all machined evenly some of them have slightly different head diameters and stuff it's not fantastic but for a sub twenty dollar knife it's okay and I got a decent razor edge on it it came sharpened at about 25 degrees per side, 50 inclusive, which which is pretty uh, which is pretty obtuse <laughs> as knives go. Um, but you know, it cuts stuff, and I could reprofile it if I really wanted to. Um, so overall, I'm really happy with this. I mean, I'm enjoying it. It's a fun knife to play with, and it's surprisingly practical. So there's my... That is my look at butterfly knives. A <laughs> knife with a slightly unsavory reputation that turns out to be a really solid and clever tool. You have a nice day now, folks.